Hello, it's James from Autosolve. Uh, I'm just going to take you through a quick review of the product content for our latest version 13 diagnostic assistance software. You'll notice if you've been using previous versions that we've changed the interface quite radically for this version and uh, we've actually gone into a user self-select method where you put your content subject matter into this box and then it gives you I want to learn about, I want to carry to test or I want to see a comparison waveform. The key feature here is that the icons are self-sorting, which is great, so the more you click on them, the more they prioritize themselves, and the ones you use more often will appear at the top, and the ones you use less often will appear at the bottom. So we're hoping that this makes it much easier to use. When we look at the software itself, obviously it's been designed for technicians to enable them to make a quick and accurate diagnostic of, of the components that they're coming across in their daily work. Um, it's be able to be used in several different ways. We anticipate many technicians will come straight for guided and the guided diagnostic section lists the key components. Um, one area that we've added to in this is body and chassis components and each of the component types that are listed under that broad heading are shown here in this um, user box. So we've covered things like uh, bonnet switches, boot switches, um, fuel level sensors, electric windows, side electric windows, wiper motors and then we're covering chassis components such as ABS, active and passive wheel speed sensors, ABS, ESP, yaw rate sensors and lateral acceleration. We've covered heating, ventilation, air conditioning in blower motors, we've got bulb failures in Hazen and headlights and then we're into the brown section which is ABS, uh, sorry, supplementary restraint systems and airbags. And then the blue section is steering, so we've got uh, electro electric power steering, electro-hydraulic and pure electric with also steering angle sensors and then tire pressure monitoring. We're also covering then all of the key components, both sensors and actuators on petrol engines. A quick sample here of the ones we're up against, so all of the key position sensors, coolant temperature, crankshaft, camshaft. We've also got some direct petrol injection systems covered here, so the key components for FSI and GDI. We've got uh, exhaust, gas, recirculation, turbo boost control, petrol injectors, fuel pumps, ignition coils, coil on plug, coil per plug, you know, um, all the basic types of components that you're likely to come across in your daily activity. We do the same then for diesel engines. Every single component fitted to a diesel engine is listed here in um, an easy to find format and enables the user to find information uh, regarding test evaluation and diagnosis of that component or test sensor. Uh, let's have a quick look through, let's pick on one, there's a fuel rail pressure sensor coming up. So for all of the component types we've just seen, um, in behind the icon when I click on that brings up a four window page of information and the windows are split into component test. So what is it, where is it? So in this case we're looking at a fuel pressure sensor, what happens when it breaks and its location. In this section we're looking at things you need to know before you make a test, such as wiring and the wiring layout. We've also listed uh, EOBD trouble codes to enable you to put this in, in our search box. You can enter a fault code straight from the scan tool and then be brought to the relevant page. And each of the fault codes is given a description as we see in this green box. We've then got master tech notes. So the master tech notes are meant to give you information really that uh, will stop you falling into diagnostic pitfalls and traps and then we've got test information and the test information section really gives you ideas about how you should set the vehicle up and all your test equipment to be able to make an accurate measurement. Uh, where possible we include a connection location so here you can see the voltmeter or oscilloscope connected to the signal wire and then the final box are the results you should get based on um, the output either for an oscilloscope or in this case a multimeter or in fact a scan tool, so we're covering the key technical data and the key measurement tools that you would use in the workshop. And then of course we give you an unexpected test results section here at the bottom, which um, enables you to try and work out next steps then when this thing's gone wrong. If I go back to the diagnostic page here, the guided diagnostics, you can really see um, we've got all of the key components covered off for the, uh, the, vari the, the variety of vehicles that you see. We've also got symptom analysis and or procedures. So for each one of these um, petrol and diesel engines then we can go into a guided diagnostic route or if I'm going to select up here diagnostics, we can go to diagnostic procedures and the diagnostic procedures give you a process to undertake testing. For instance, we've got um, 
a CAN bus circuit test here which we can have a quick look at and the CAN bus circuit test then takes us through processes for checking when you have a CAN bus fault um, and we're using uh, some text to describe exactly how the system hooks together, type the faults that you're likely to see and then we've got an animated diagram here of performing a multimeter test on the CAN bus and the screens update each time and then the values that you're seeing on your test device in this case a multimeter change depending on the sort of fault you get and the idea is that you attach the meter you see the value you've got so then you can look at this screen and work out which one of the faults is present with the vehicle that you're working on so the diagnostic section um, really contains some pretty key procedures that if you're not sure or you're unfamiliar you've done it once before but you can't quite remember these um, test diagnostic procedures really get you to the nub of the um, test procedure very very quickly and, and accurately. So we've, we've got guided and diagnostics. Um, the other thing I wanted to take you through just briefly was the content. Um, the content is split into these key areas, fundamentals, diagnostics and testing, reference library and then the appendices. Fundamentals is a bit like a book really where the subject areas are split into chapters and each of the chapters contains key information regarding that subject area so for instance we can have a look at hybrid vehicles and we can go for the Toyota hybrid system and we'll see when we see that um, this page come up the Toyota hybrid system it's given in a tabular format the content so we might say we want to have a quick look at the layout we can click on this link and it will take us to the layout link in this test topic we can scroll down through there's lots of images and um, you know pictures and data of how this thing works so if you've not seen one before you wanted to get a, a rough idea fundamentals is a great way of, of doing that we'll go back and back again so fundamentals there are split into 11 different chapters if you like and each chapter contains a number of different pages relating to that subject um, matter we'll have a look at diesel that's another interesting one for a lot of people diesel systems uh, and the diesel systems have basically you know it's covering the key parts of diesel systems. One new thing for um, this section of fundamentals is that we have end of section tests and the idea behind the end of section tests are that once you've read through that fundamental section or maybe you've got an apprentice in the workshop that you're hoping to bring on you can set him a job of going away reading some of this stuff and then coming in running through a quick test just to confirm knowledge and understanding and so the test results uh, as you go through are marked as you go through so what can be best desired, uh, described as pressure in a system in a circuit I put resistance and that's not correct of course the correct answer is voltage so as you go through the tests it's uh, it's a quick just evaluation of your skill level or your knowledge and understanding of the subject you've just read so each of the fundamental sections has an end of section test and there we can see the one for electronic ignition petrol injection etc etc so the fundamentals is a, is a sort of background knowledge and information. The guided really are there to walk you, pace you through each of the individual component tests and the diagnostic section are procedures around diagnostics. So that's really the bulk of the information and we've covered off, as we said, the key subject matter areas, chassis, body, petrol and diesel. Um, in addition to this, we've got library, and the library contains uh, oscilloscope waveforms. So if you're using a scope and you wanted to get a reference waveform from a component, um, we can have a look here at chassis components, for instance. We've got uh, a sample waveform, if you're using an oscilloscope, for you to compare the one against the car. So we've got uh, ABS speed sensors. These are listed alphabetically, obviously. ABS wheel speed sensors digital. If we click on that one, you'll see uh, an example output from an ABS waveform from a digital sensor. Underneath the waveform we've got connection notes, how you hook it up to the vehicle and uh, where you should put your probes. And then some notes, so any notes that, you've, that we think are relevant to that particular test. If I go back, that will take me to the, the reference waveforms. So we've got lots of them uh, and some interesting ones. Uh, and ones that maybe you haven't seen before so again it's a nice reference source for waveforms when you're doing component checks and testing. Um, the other part of the software which is quite unique and, and it is, is, is a rave um, feature with our existing customers is the My Notes section. The My Notes section um, is a summary page of notes that users have made throughout the software as they've been using it. Uh, I'll give you for instance, if for instance I was using guided diagnostics 
in um, petrol engines and I was checking a barometric pressure sensor and in my barometric pressure sensor testing I was doing it on a car and I decided that that particular car had a, an issue with the barometric pressure sensor that I thought do you know what I might come across this again it's uh, if I put a little note in my notepad about this fault I could go to check that first of all before I spent too much time doing other tests so technician notes can be used for storing your silver bullets to make a technician's note, we basically open up the notepad, we type in um, a component tip, don't forget to check pipe to sensor for chafing, and uh, I can basically make that note, leave it in black, or we've got a, another feature where you might want to make multiple notes about different jobs against the same component we've given you a color coding option and for instance that one I can color code red and um, which will help differentiate if I put another note in there um, Ford Barrow sensors may be square maybe a frequency type this will help me remember for instance um, that information so that I can sh save in a different color so I'm going to now save that one as uh, a brown, click OK, that saved as brown. I can save those notes, and uh, I save those notes, you can see one is sort of orange and the other in brown. Um, I can rate those notes, uh, one out of five is fair, two is average, three is good, four is pretty good, and five is excellent. So I'm thinking that's an alright, that's an average sort of note that I might want to, to review. I rate the note, the rating is saved, and then I can go to my notes section, and wherever I've been in the software over the period of time I've been using it, the My Notes section summarizes those notes. Now if I scroll down the notes, you can see that they're listed alphabetically by, um, sorry, they're, they're scaled on ascending order. So my best rated notes are at the top and my um, lowest rated notes are at the bottom. And we can see here my test I did, which I rated two. Don't forget to check the pipe sensor for chafing, barometric pressure sensors. I can go to the summary page, I can look at my notes, and then I can go back to the test that I made the notes on. And so we're linking up your own custom information related to the jobs you're doing to the data that's stored within the software. So very neat and tidy. Uh, another function that we've got in here uh, is the search bu button. With the search button, we can search for a component, and here we've got C0544, so this is a fault code straight from a code reader. I'm now gonna come into the software and try and find where that um, what relates to that fault code and here we've got one component test information ABS pressure sensor I can click display and that will take me through to the component type that that search item has been on and here you can see on this page highlighted in green and made bold we've got that search item so if I click on that search item C0544 brake pressure sensor B circuit open that's the fault code for that um, component and the component test data is relevant so because I've got a code, I can now check out the component information, see how it works. I can check out the pre-test information, how am I going to measure this thing to see if it is broken. I can further then come and check the test conditions and how I set the tools up and where I need to make my measurements to check and evaluate that component. And then I can come to the test results to see does the component perform to the specification I was hoping. And it gives me waveforms and scan tool data as well as multimeter data. So very powerful. Once I've done a search, I can also sh uh, use a find. So the search gets me to the right page and the find can help me find a word within that page. So it's a bit like a narrow down search. So in this case, I'm gonna put pedal. And as I type pedal, it's searching the page I found and it's finding all references to pedal and highlighting them in yellow. So we really geared up um, being able to search and find information very, very quickly and easily. So we've got a macro search in, in the search feature, search the whole software for a, a particular phrase. And then we've got a micro search in the find, which depending on the page you're in, you can use the find button to find specific instances of a word. So, you know, it's a really quick and easy way to do. Uh, the other thing we can do then is also we've generated a feature which is called favorites so no matter where you are in the software you can click on favorites and add yourself a favorite page test for a b s pressure click ok and then what we'll see at the end of my favorites list is um, my test for abs pressure so i can come out of the software go back to the home 
So essentially cancel the navigation I've had. I can come to favorites and I can find my page I was on previously and link through to it. So favorites is another way that you can customize how the software delivers the information for you in a way that suits you. So, so a great feature. And then finally, we've got feedback. The feedback button enables you to send us your feedback on the software. Perhaps you'd like to see things added. Perhaps you've got a query about a way a function works or test value or data. And so that is um, a way of you getting in contact. A quick feedback form. You have to put some really basic information in here. Uh, it'll just wait for a second for that page to load up. And um, once that page loads up, you whiz that through. That will land with the uh, team at Autosolve. We'll take a look through that and uh, then get back in touch. So uh, we're keen to hear from you with any issues that you may have, any queries, any comments, all of that stuff. Really good. Helps to shape the product and uh, make sure we deliver what you want. So you basically put your, your business name, first name, surname, business name, email address and comments. Whiz that through and that lands with uh, the Autosolve team and we can take a look through that and get back to you. If I whiz back to the product then, um, that is a basic summary of the content that uh, we've got in this latest version 13 of Diagnostic Assistance.